Hi folks, so what we're going to do is talk through the use of DTS Monaco for variant coding Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Um, so DTS is going to come as part of the MB Star umbrella or suite of software, which includes Exentry for diagnosis, so DTS fault codes, etc. Star Finder for wiring diagrams, WIS for workshop manuals, um, and then of course DTS for variant coding. Um, you should also have, again, depending on how you're set up, chances are you may have bought a hard drive or a laptop that came pre-installed with this, um, but you want to have a, a seed key as well. I have two of them here, I use the one on the left mostly, uh, mainly actually. So a couple of things you need to get familiar with when it comes to using DTS. So one of them is the DTS projects. So think of the project as the actual um, file that is loaded via DTS to communicate with each specific ECU. So let's say your car has 20 different ECUs or 10 different ECUs, you know, for the transmission, for the engine, for um, the air conditioning, for stability control, instrument cluster, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, you're, you're going to have a different file used to communicate with each one of those. And then for each vehicle, those files are grouped into projects. So if I go into this projects folder, let's say you have a 20, no, 2009 or 2010 to maybe 2016 E-Class, you're going to have a 212, W212. So you're going to have most of the files you need in this folder. Um, there's actually, assuming you have a similar setup to me, you can download a lot of this stuff online via different forms. Um, you, yeah, there, there's there's probably also going to be a BOR version of that, of, of that uh, project, so, you know, BOR 212, um, I think it just has better projects, better files. I don't tend to use this projects folder, um, I tend to just find out the file I need for this specific ECU and I just load it file by file, so as opposed to like a project with all the different ECUs in my car, um, transmission, engine, etc, etc. Um, as opposed to loading that in one kind of workspace, which is again a terminology we'll get used to now as we open DTS, I just tend to open a project file by project file. Um, so if I'm doing something on the transmission, I'll just open the transmission uh, file, uh, then I'll close it, then I'll go to the engine file, etc, etc, or maybe it's the rear SAM or the seat modules or something like that, if I'm adding you know, memory seats or electric, electric seats. Um, I'll just open the file I need as opposed to loading a big project which takes a bit long to load and I just prefer to do it that way. So we'll open DTS. So here we are. Um, and by the way, this is DTS Monaco 8. 9 is going to be much the same. Um, different user interface, probably better feature set in some areas, but I just tend to use 8 because I'm familiar with it. Um, but the logic is the same. So instead of loading a workspace, um, what I'll do is I'll just go temporary workspace and then I'll find, so I already had that one loaded, so I'll find the specific file I need. So I can I can go into, you, you probably have a folder like this, so CBF, CFF, SMR, they're the different file types that DTS uses to communicate with the ECU. It um, has all the settings and all that for, for each ECU. You, you find them in here as well, so I'll just, just for the purpose of example, I'll go in here, go down to the, the BUR212, and then you'll see the CBF folder, go in here, um, just change the file type from SMR to CBF, and you'll see I have loads of different CBF files here, um, and depending on what it is I'm looking for, so let's just type in SAM, so here's the different SAM modules, um, what you could do is you could just highlight all of them, or you could open them one by one, and just, you don't um, you don't know maybe which one is going to be used, so you see Sam F, Sam or Sam or Sam F. So there's two different Sam Fs and there's two different Sam Ors. You might think, well, which one is relevant one for my car? Well, I know because I just access this from the the BR two one two folder, so they're all E class um, of that of that generation. It, it it's going to be one of them. So you just load them all and see which one actually successfully communicates with the car. Um, it forms a connection basically. If if it does, then it's that one. If it doesn't, then then it's not that one, I guess. Um, yes, yeah, so a bit of trial and error there. 
what I do instead though is I just use um, this folder which, which has everything. So here's all the SMR files, all the CBF files. I don't use CFF really. Um, CBF is usually like, I might use that for the SAM modules and for things that are like instrument cluster things that are kind of low security that I don't need to unlock. But if I need to unlock an ECU, so transmission ECU needs to be unlocked and the engine ECU needs to be unlocked, I tend to go with SMR. So I'll, I'll show you what it's like for SMR. So again, I need to change the file type here, change that to SMR, that should load them all. And look, there's hundreds, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different, different types. So you need to know which one you need. You could use maybe Google, ChatGPT, you know, to try and find out which one specifically for your car. ChatGPT, for example, could give you, you know, a couple of different examples of, of ones and at least you, it, it'll point you down the right direction. Um, you could also open Exentry and like do a quick test. And when you go into each ECUs, let's say you went to the transmission within Exentry, um, You'll be able to see. It should show you somewhere. Just keep an eye out for different different file type names, and um, it should show you or different different variant names. And um, it should show you or give you an indication as to which transmission you have or which software you need to open. Um, I happen to know for for uh, for a handful of different cars. Um, just minimize that for a second. Get back to that. So, engine ECU C or sixty one. Okay, so. We'll load that again. There's a couple of different variants you can open them all and see which one communicates. I happen to know this one works for a car that I'm working on at the moment, so we'll click on CR61 again. CR61 is one of the engine ECUs. Press open now. This pop up will appear if it's a CBF file that you're opening, choose this top CBF one. If it's a SMR file, choose this top SMR one. Um, don't bother with any of the other stuff, just look past them. So it's really you're only going to choose this one if it's CBF file, this one it's an SMR. Finish, and then load. So here we are. First thing you're going to have to do is um, press start. So this is the start communication. It's going to come up red here now because I'm not actually connected to the vehicle. Even though I have my multiplexer plugged in, so that's the physical unit that connects from OBD essentially through this physical looking unit that looks something like this. Um, and then through a USB cable to the laptop. So, I just don't have it put into the car at the moment. That's why it has failed. Usually it will come up green if it's successful. I would say if it hasn't come up green, what you could do is you could leave execution mode, this little kind of stop or pause button, and then re-enter execution mode, and then try again. Or over on the left-hand side here, close DTS project. You can just close the project and just reload it the same way I've just loaded it already. Um, you do need to have a, a, a connection with the vehicle though. So first thing first, press start, keep going until this comes up green, it should communicate. Um, if it doesn't communicate sometimes you might unlock the ECU and then come back and then it might, it might connect in but nine times out of ten you want to have a green before you proceed from here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go into diagnostics This is an SMR file, it's a locked ECU, it's important to unlock it. Again, you don't need to do that for like a, the instrument cluster or um, one of the SAM modules. Again, different lower security items. Um, but you need to go down here to security access, expand that. Um, and then what you need to do here is what we're going to do is we're just going to go back for a second and open up the seed key program. So if your CT program isn't pointing to the right directory, um, you need to kind of find this directory and you're probably going to, if you search computer for like, or search the hard drive for seed key calculator for uh, Udamo and then direct it to the lib or library uh, folder in there. That should have all the different DLL files and there's hundreds of them, maybe more. Um, once you have a point to the right directory, then you can come in here and you can just search C461. Um, and you can see there's different there's a couple of different ECUs for CR61, so that's the NFZ one, I don't want that one, that's not the one I loaded, DTS, it's actually down here at the bottom, uh, the one that I want, I just know from, from using it. And the access level here, just read this, so OB05, so let's just go back to DTS for a second. So I have different access levels, um, 
OB is kind of, I believe it's like full access, whereas level 5 is like, you know, lets you do some things, level 6 lets you do a bit more, level 9 lets you do quite a bit, um, I think it goes up to level 11 on some things, but OB, I'm pretty sure this one is, is, is full on access, and it's, it's the only one that the CFT support, so that's the one that I have to choose, um, no other reason. So what I'll do here is, if you double tap, tap this, it's not going to work now, you're going to see some things load down here, they'll come up in red, um, they come up in blue if it's successful, um, and this, this icon here will, will probably change um, as well, so let's just uh, double tap, so you see it changed, to, I can stop it here, but just let it run, we're going to try a couple of times, communicate, it keeps failing, failing, yeah, so it's failed three times here, again I'm not connected to the car, what should come up, pretty much down the bottom, it's the last time that usually comes up all the time when you, when you first do this, is um, is a kind of a request key. Um, so you tap this cell here, to the value cell that is, and right click, copy cell, and then you come back over to your um, seed key calculator. So I actually just, uh, I'm selecting this DLL. And then what you wanna do is you wanna paste it in here. Paste. Um, hasn't loaded properly, but anyways, this is just, I'm doing this for the purpose of example, it should, instead of zero, 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 zero at the end, it should have different digits, but um, then what you'll do is you'll generate the key, it gives you this key down here, control C, copy that, and then we need to come down, just single click this, so underneath each of the, so you're gonna have a request seed, and then you're gonna have seed key, uh, this, is, this is the same across different ECUs, you, you'll see what I mean as you play around with this. So just single tap, okay, and then come over here to the right hand side, and you'll see this like um, uh, send. So just enter in the value box here, just tap into the value box, maybe double tap in, control V, let's paste it, I just press enter, and then come back over here, and now this time double tap, double tap this, you see it's, it's executing something. It's gonna fail, of course, because I'm not connected to the vehicle, but if I was connected, most of this stuff come up in blue, and yeah, very much, once everything comes up in blue, once it's successful, then you're ready to go into variant coding. So then you click over up here, you have variant coding, connect. Give it a sec. Okay, so now we're, now we're connected. And from this drop down, sometimes depends on the ECU, um, you know, just, just, just look through, like there might be, might be different, different options here, you can code different things. Um, I know for the engine you use tends to be just whatever the top one is. So um, at the moment the meaning and the original meaning of all these, basically the values of all these things are, are not showing up because I'm not connected to the vehicle, it's not reading anything from the vehicle. But like for example you want to turn stop start off, you can see here, it's in German but you can, you can make sense of some of the things. You see this here like dynamic packet, so it's obviously something to do with you know, some sort of dynamic settings of the, of the engine ECU. Um, but what you do is, this will have a value, let's just say, and um, it'll be one of one of these values. It's probably this top one here. Stop start logic default on. So you can go to last mode, for example. So you go to last mode, um, you can come on down and just a couple of other things. Um, does your car have the performance packet? I think you can actually just enable this. I don't think it's a hardware thing. So if, if it's off by default, you can, you can put it on, see what happens. Just test drive the car around around the estate, around the block, on a dyno or whatever. See if it makes a difference, see if it runs okay. If it does, chances are it's fine. If it doesn't, just revert back. Um so yeah, we'll keep going down. Um because there's one here that's quite important, quite useful when you're in the engine ECU just while I'm here, I'll show you. So there's your VMAX as well. Um depends on the vehicle, what you can set it to. Um Again, it, it depends on the engine you see in the vehicle. There's another, some sort of dynamic packet option here. Um, LSD, the, you know, you can turn the limit slip diff on or off. There's also another setting somewhere as well that you can adjust the LSD, I think. Um, these are different types of gearbox you can choose. So we have the, you have the 9G Tronic, it's gonna be NAG3. And you can choose whatever B Sport AMG. Yeah, you, know, you can play around. Um, yeah, a bit of a bit of trial and error, testing the car. Um, you get some information online, but for Mercedes, it's not like BMW. You tend people tend not to share that much, um, unfortunately. 
but um, in here somewhere as well there's also the accelerate, accelerator curve um, I can't remember which setting it is but you can you can change that as well by default Mercedes tends to be quite lazy and smooth um, just to fit the, the style of the car that, that they're looking to go after they're not very sporty typically um, but you can change it to be more responsive um, again it's in, it's in here somewhere I think it's uh, KLD or something like that and it's on a level of 1 to 4 1 is probably default you can set it to 4 it's a bit more responsive you know I guess 2 and 3 are in between but yeah the thing is you need to kind of play around with this some things are obvious stop start for example you know fairly, fairly obvious and safe but what I would say is before you do anything before you do any coding what you want to do is hit save and kind of follow the steps here I have a folder kind of created on the desktop or sorry, within a uh, within documents. So I don't my doc. Yeah, this is the folder actually. So but if I just go to documents, you see here I have original and updated uh, CGF files. It actually has some more files in there as well. Um, so yeah, w when I press save, I, I chuck them in here, so you can see I have different saved saved files um, for different ECUs. That's for the gateway. That's for stability control. Transmission is the the VGS NAG. The the uh, the nine tron nine G tronic. CR is obviously um, the engine needs to use, I've already said. So save it down first. I just add a bit of a description on it as well. And you can open these files, by the way. If you go um, you go here, you can open them. You can add some comments to them as well and hit save. But you can do that also when you're when you're setting them up here. So when you press save, you can, you can add comments. It gives you a bit of a pop-up and you can add different comments. Save as a new file each time. And then... For, for the original ones, just type, you know, CR61 dash or underscore ORI, so original. And um, so if you have to revert back, you can. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, we covered quite a, quite a bit there. Often, often what I would do actually, after I've done some coding, so, so once you've kind of changed some coding, you come down to the bottom here, you press do coding, it obviously highlights and you can click it. And obviously go to 100% once it's successful and once it's done. Um, on some ECUs, like for the transmission ECU, I always get an error at the end, um, and then I can't go back in and, and do any more coding. It's, it's, everything works, everything does code correctly. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the error sometimes means, but um, everything works just fine. Then if I want to do subsequent coding for the transmission ECU, what I have to do is disconnect. So you see here, stop execution. And then I have to start again and go through all that process again. You know, start communicating, do the security, um, and then and then go back into variant code and connect, etc. Et you can also check PTC codes, you know, connect here, um, and then you can read again, it's not going to connect for me because the vehicle isn't plugged in. But um, yeah, that covers quite a bit of information, and um, that should take you a long way to variant coding on a Mercedes. If you have specific questions in terms of hey how do I turn on agility mode how do I you know what are some of the settings you know I know to be successful to say for a 9g tronic gearbox I can share those and um, you can reach out you know we can you can go back and forth in terms of in terms of what works and doesn't and um, this is quite experimental in terms of you need to have that mindset that hey it's trial and error here you're trying different things and uh, the level of support that say BMW has or, or Volkswagen Audi Group is, is not really available for Mercedes at the moment in terms of online forms, etc. Um, so, yeah, we kind of have to just work together to kind of try different things, see what works. Um, and yeah, hopefully, uh, if you found this valuable, I hope that if you come across settings that work for you, you're able to kind of give back to the community and, and, and share as well. That's what it's all about.